Yeah, well, I'm back for another one. So, among all other things, my perspective on businesses came out at the end of the last video. It wasn't supposed to. Um, it's like a lot of quick bites because a lot of the information I'm talking about, you can find other people talking about it. Uh, it might be overly exaggerated or it might be under, under, underwhelming, but yeah, you know, when you speak about certain things, you can really disrupt, like I said, when you disrupt people's bread and butter, their way of making like their, themselves through life, they don't let you get too far. Um, you could be hacked. Your videos could be hacked. Your websites could be hacked. You could be living in a bubble. You could have all of the same applications that someone else has. You know, with YouTube, Meta, Twitter, uh, you know, but Instagram, TikTok. You can have all of these platforms that are well known and have a lot of following on them. But someone could just make a hack into your, I guess, you know, yours, put you in a bubble. You know, make sure that the only people that interact with you are bots. Uh, make sure that if your posts are seen, uh, the number of views is regulated to a certain degree where you get attention, but you know, just enough for you to feel like your video is out and not enough for you to, you know, actually be seen. You might be seen by your friends, but you know, it is what it is. And a lot of the information you're sharing, the people that do get a chance to see it are people who can't do anything with it. Can't save them, can't help them, can't educate them. And it's nothing really I could, uh, I mean, I've, I've made this video before, all right? That's the tricky part about it. I've made this video before. And a lot of people don't understand the possibility for everyone to be under a mass state of amnesia. If more than a couple of people can prove they've experienced deja vu, yeah, it's kind of hard to prove a mass state of uh, amnesia. I made this video already. I can remember. I made this video. I made this video. Uh, I talked about all of this. It doesn't get far. Helping people don't get you far in life. It gets you loved and admired, but. We live in a world where people have found that a continued existence, being morally sound, isn't profitable. And not only is it not profitable, but if I can, if I, if I have a person that comes to me every day because they break their leg every day, I can fix their leg every day. They can pay me every day, but it's gonna be. It's gonna be less profitable if I fix their leg and after I fix it, it no longer breaks. You know what I'm saying? Like, after a while, you're gonna get sick and tired of fixing this person's leg and you're going to accidentally fix their leg so well that it doesn't break anymore. So when you do that, that person never comes back. You don't have a customer anymore. And yeah, they can say, oh, he fixed my leg. Now my leg doesn't break no more. It's a God, it's God's sin. God's sin right there. Oh man, blessed be him. You're, yeah, you're gonna be seen as this almighty healer, this holy person. But once everybody comes to see you one time, that's it. You're gonna have to, after that, you're gonna have to travel. You're gonna have to travel around. Or what people are going to do in order to keep being in your presence is they're gonna start hurting themselves. You don't want that. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, because look, look, you don't want people to start hurting themselves just to be in your presence. Because after you fix them so much, oh, I broke my neck, fixed. Ah, oh, I can't break my neck no more. Ah, oh, uh, I gouged my eye out, fixed. Wow, my eyes are invincible. If you make a person impervious to damage, 
completely impervious to damage and they can't hurt themselves anymore. They're going to feel like, wow, I have no reason. They're going to get depressed. I'm like, I don't have a reason to be, to, I, can't, I, can't, I, don't have, I don't know how to support you anymore. Clear as depression. Uh, I can't support you. That's your fault. <laughs> like, like it's, the world is, um, the world is weird. And you could teach somebody else how to do what you do, pass it on, and hope that they give you a cut. But at the end of the day, we're, we're all just we're all just these interesting creatures, and we learn, we live, we pass on stuff, and um, if, you, if you don't know what else to do, you get locked up or you get rapidly aged until you're an old person, and you get stored away. I mean, it's, it's, it's weird. I mean, there's no such thing as old. We all have already figured out a lack of a, a lack of pigmentation in your hair is lack of sunlight. Debilitating issues with the body is lack of motor skills. Your joints, your bones, all of that is a lack of exercise. So if, if someone can get you to be stuck in one spot, not moving, not getting any sunlight, not getting any fresh air, being exposed to chemicals, you will turn into what we call an old person. And if you get out and start experiencing life, you will you will gradually start to age backwards. If you go on an all meat diet without any exercise, you will get cancer. Yes, you will get cancer. Eternal cancer. Because essentially you're eating protein. The protein is going to help your body rapidly repair itself. If you don't have if you don't have anything to repair, your regular cells will just start to swell. Your regular cells will start to enlarge in certain places. And after a while, yeah, I eat meat all the time. I'm fine. But you're active. Try eating meat and not doing nothing. You're gonna get cancer. It's gonna be one of the. It's gonna be somewhere inside of you, but it's gonna be cancer. So it's like you would say everything in moderation. I mean, you you can eat like 15 tons of meat in a week, and if you're exercising every goddamn day of the week, you're gonna look like a monster, big old buff, swole, muscular looking. You're gonna look like a walking muscle. Same thing with a person that eats fruits and vegetables. You eat fruits and vegetables all the time, but you're constantly, you know, pumping and working out. Yeah, you're not eating a lot. You're not eating a primary source of protein, but like your body is just like, I got the energy to repair that. So you got some vegans and stuff out here that's muscular. They're not swelling, but it's like whatever, whatever part of their body that they tear up and mess up, they have enough vitamins and sugar going in that it's just like, I can go. I can go. I can go. Staying hydrated and everything, I can go. I can go. They might look like me, but be strong, as, strong enough to lift up, you know, somebody that's three times their weight. And it's just because their body can handle it. It's, it's compressed strength. Yeah, it is. Not you as me, me as you. And uh, we live in a world where the truth is not marketable, it's not monetizable, and a lot of people like to be lied to. If I ask somebody, hey, am I like extremely skinny? Am I like too skinny? They might not want to tell me, hey, you look like you're dying. Or, hey, yeah, you here, you know, you, 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 know, you can use a couple of meals. Like for me, I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, this is not what I'm used to seeing. But like, I don't look like some of those videos of those starving Africans that they used to show us when we were coming up. So it's like, in my mind, it's like, I'm fine, you know? And I'm not getting up and falling over and like breaking my, 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 my bones every day. And my joints aren't going. So it's like, I'm fine for now, but it's like, I'm at the point where I have to keep it on my mind to make sure I don't get any smaller. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, pec my, my pectorals can can use a little uplifting, but that's 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 neither here nor there. That's uh, that's up to me. 
I was already at this point uh, last year. I posted videos about it. I was at this point. I was I was going out to the parks and whatnot and doing pull-ups every day. Not that many, just enough, but consistently every night I would go do pull-ups. Do a pull-ups, push-ups, I would hang. I got taller. I was going on walks. My feet got bigger. I got my feet grew. Uh, my pectorals were shrinking in. My, my posture changed. My uh, my uh, my uh, my resistance was going up and my stamina was going up. So yeah, I know what to do. It's just like I said, I was not doing all of that in secret, and I was well, I recorded everything. Yeah, to the point where I formed a habit of when I will go out, where I will go out, and how I'll go about it. And by doing so, I have put myself in some very tight situation. Like not, in the, like, not in the sense where it's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. It's not like dying. It was more so just having everything disrupted. I, I guess you could say me speaking the way I was speaking was disrupting other people and I didn't know it. And rather than like, you know, just tell me, hey, can you cut that out? Rather than having anyone approach me and communicate with me about cutting it out, they just made me experience what they were going through. Whatever faction it was, they all had their own ways of doing it. And I even received a very subtle, not so subtle warning over the radio, bruh, over the radio. I received a very subtle warning. Like it was indirect, but the terms and the way that the phrase was placed was to let me know we're talking to you. If you don't catch on, it's not our fault what comes after. And what came after was me getting terribly destabilized. Terribly destabilized. I got my ass handed to me by a lot of factions. Medical field, the food industry, the health, hey, medical food, health, field, pharmaceuticals. Yeah, they, they found me. Everybody found me. It was easy to find me. Every, I mean, everything is on the internet. All my business is on the internet. Where I am and how to find me is on the internet. I got my ass beat. Like, not even in the physical sense. I had every aspect of my life challenged in a way that was supposed to scare me off and censor me, and I didn't stop talking. And so rather than, like... So rather than like, you know, try, try to take, uh, try to take me out too. Yeah. Rather than like physically try to take me out. Cause that, that wasn't happening. I literally had everything taken from me, given back. And when I got it back, it wasn't, it ain't been the same since. It ain't been the same since. So, uh, yeah. If you want to spread truth, go for it. But if it, if your truth messes with somebody's way of making money, they just might do everything in their power but kill you. And, um, yeah, you might end up being homeless on the streets with nothing and no one to talk to and no one to believe or trust you because you're homeless. Yeah. I could be homeless and still spread the word. The only problem is what I would have to do. Simple. Clean my face up, shave everything off here, and probably wear a bandana and put on some appealing clothes and just eat nothing. Eat nothing so I don't smell. Eat nothing so I don't smell, and I will have to find a way to keep my clothes clean because eventually everywhere I go, my clothes are gonna get a smell. I mean, I have to keep my clothes clean or constantly just buy like, like cheap clothes. But at the same time, just always look appealing in order to spread the word. Jesus. But um, yeah, no, that's been my journey. If you see it, if you see this, if you hear this, thank you for watching. This ain't the first time I've said it. This ain't the first time I've been down this road. I have done this several different times in every industry that I speak on. 
has approached me either to shut me up or to find a way for me to exist, coexist peacefully with them because yeah um, I'm messing with their bread and butter not intentionally this happens every so often every so often you have a person that comes out and do this and they all have their own way of doing it and they all have their specific targets I watched each of them promote stuff and I downloaded and ingested all of the information and every tactic that was thrown my way to scare me or to push me down a uh, push me down a certain path it happened there are people that approached me and I changed my diet I'm like oh blood type diet eat right for your blood type I'd never heard of it and I never have I'm like okay I don't mind testing that out I'm influential um, I'm testing the diet out while talking about it and people are probably like oh, I'll try that with you I found out a whole bunch of BS about the diet I found out a lot of stuff that's very dangerous if done wrong I got I got put away for a good little minute and when I came back a lot of people were dying left and right you know why because the eat right for your blood type diet can hurt you because You don't, you don't know how to balance. You don't know how to take things and balance them. I came from Dr. CB to the blood type diet, which means I have some predisposed knowledge on how to take the things that I learned from that diet and make them work for me. A lot of people who I, you know, may have turned on to the diet, something might have happened to them. Because the eat right for your blood type diet can kill you. It can benefit you, but it can also kill you because you have to balance it. You have to take from you have to take from each of these diets. So the eat right for your blood type diet, yes, it does, it is beneficial for your blood, but what it does to your blood and how it affects your blood is important. I I did I not only ate the food, but I learned what the food does. That's not what everybody has time to do. Some people just have time to try it to eat it you know I might be eating something someone might say oh I'll give that a try but they don't have the time to sit and study to see okay this is my blood type these are food items they say are beneficial neutral and harmful now I didn't go and say all right I'm gonna try all of the things that are harmful for my blood type and I'm gonna eat all of those I didn't eat those you know they said avoid those I didn't try those I avoided them like I said but I didn't test to see if they're actually harmful. And some of them I had before. But I didn't see any problem with it. Going down the line, you really have to be safe with all of the things that you try. I I have no way of sitting and giving people any speeches because when I learned the things that I learned, I came back and I tried to speak on it very loudly, very vividly, very rushed. So in a sense, I had to realize, just like some of the people that came before me, like the Breatharians and um, even Dr. Sabian himself, people can people can just destroy your reputation. Oh, Dr. CB spoke about the alkaline diet, but oh, we heard from his family that he used to still eat fish and seafood. Okay, the man is from Honduras. It's one of the staples he had growing up. You like fish. Okay. One of the one of the leading breatharians used to eat snacks. Well damn. He ate snacks. So now with me it's like, okay, you went from being strong with the alkaline vegan push and movement and then you stumbled over into a blood type thing and like, then you started eating meat and stuff. It's like, yeah. But I told y'all all along the way what I was doing. So even if a lot of people stop having faith in me and stop supporting me, stop following me, I had never lied to you. I told you everything I was going to do before I did it. I told you everything. 
if you didn't have time to watch my videos, if you didn't have time to read my posts, if you didn't have time to ask me a question, if you just heard everything word of mouth, I'm not gonna do about that. I'm not gonna lie to you to try to save face. Like, no, no, I didn't. No, I did. Blood type diet, vegan diet, alkaline, beneficial. You know, it's like, when it comes down to stuff that helps people make money, there's nothing I can do about it. I told you my story, I told you my experience. If you don't believe me, it's okay. But you can't say I didn't tell you if you try what I tried and something happens to you. Same thing happened to you. Go ahead. Go on the alkaline diet and die and try to help people. All of a sudden, you're a crazy vegan. Get on the blood side, die and try to help people. All of a sudden, people start dying. People start disappearing. People start having health issues. And the person that's going to be placed to blame is you. Nothing you can do about it. The more you try to help people, the more you help other people. And the people you help might just want to hurt people. Or was it? Trippy. See ya.